how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eden. <laughs> She'll be here. And today we're going to be escaping these nice little custom PNW aquariums, uh, the all-in-one and the micro with the little sump and stand included. Uh, we've done a couple of these before in the past, and uh, we thought we'd share our little tips and tricks and whatnot with you guys. And uh, I've already kind of started mine ahead of time. And then I was like, ah, oh, this is what we should do for the live stream. So I kind of stopped what I was doing, but it also helped out. I can go through and try and read chat and stuff like that. And uh, Shelby can piece together hers and vice versa. So uh, all about shrimp and fish and everything like that as well. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, We'll try and bring those up and post those. We'll also have Harley uh, pop in uh, either in chat or up on the live stream tonight and uh, answer anyone's questions about these little sumps. So I have learned out uh, quite a bit about the sumps uh, from using them from one show to the other. The first show, we did not have Harley with us. Uh, it was the Aquafest show in Louisiana, and we set up. I set up one of these aquariums, and Shelby set up one of these. Uh, and then I used uh, mountain stone and kind of pieced together a little mountain uh, diorama with a little bit of an arch bridge style thing with a canyon. And uh, uh, we put shrimp in it, turned it on, and while the shrimp were going crazy, I didn't have like a little shrimp. Uh, blocker to stop them from getting sucked in and they made their way into the sump and they were just going around and I ended up turning off the sump and pulling the shrimp out to save them um, but went to the next show and Harley's like oh why don't you have any shrimp and I told him the story and he's like oh you can turn down the pump so uh, the little pumps that they uh, include um, are, are adjustable uh, they can turn the flow down uh, they have them turned up because they are like reef ready tanks as they are advertised. But uh, Harley is trying to get it known that these are for freshwater aquariums as well. Uh, so it's kind of really hard to see what I got going on. That kind of looks a little bit better like that with the with the glare. But uh, the top of the tank here, it's still connected to the pump. But... This top part of the tank comes out. It's got a lid on it. The lid's got little uh, notches on it so it can't slide off. So it fits in there quite nicely. And then these are the uh, overflow tubes that go down into the sump. You can interrupt me for vibes. Thank you, vibes, for the $1.99 super chat. It says Grant's looking good. And hug Shelby. I think he was talking about the box. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, so, vibes. Uh, the sump then slides out once you got the tank out. The sump also has a little lid to it. The pump in here is adjustable, and then it is plugged in via a USB cord. Um, the cool thing is, and we didn't know this at the first show, and we went and bought extra extension cords. Correction, Joe. Uh, Jess's husband from the Aquatic Morning Show went and grabbed some extension cords and uh, we had to plug them all in separately. But if you plug in the light, and I don't have the light, I left the light on the counter, but when you plug in the light that goes over the top of these, the light actually has USB plug-ins so you can actually plug the filter into the light and you only need one uh, USB plug-in to actually run the entire setup. And then not only that, but you can connect two more aquariums to the one uh, it's daisy chain uh, them together. So that way you can run them all on one USB circuit. So that that's really cool and uh, saves us a lot of outlets. And if you're you know trying to add a couple tanks to the counter, it is a great little efficient way to add in a bunch of nice little tanks to your small space so, um, so it goes back together really easily 
Boinky used the four month membership chat says, are ghost shrimp compatible with most other shrimp? All right. So ghost shrimp are compatible with most other shrimp. However, they do get a little bit more uh, hungrier than other shrimp. And by that, they can eat other shrimp and go after the ones that like freshly molt and stuff like that. Um, but in a well-fed environment, they should be just fine together. The only problem is, is ghost shrimp are significantly harder to keep and take care of than, like, say, regular neocaridina. That's why, like, 99% of all ghost shrimp are wild-caught. Uh, maybe some of them are able to lay, like, some eggs in the, the catch containers or, or stuff like that. But for the most part, they're all wild-caught. Uh, out of like brackish or saltwater settings, uh, and then they acclimate and adapt to fresh water. They they live very well. But if you take a look at like pets, uh, pet stores that carry the feeder ghost shrimp, a lot of them are dead in the tanks, or they're you know taking them out. The pet store is good enough. They're feeding them to like the African cichlids and stuff like that. But um, there's not really anybody out there who's breeding their own ghost shrimp for uh, their own feeder shrimps. Uh, the better thing to use is like the wild type Neocaridina or something like that that are really easy to breed uh, and with just a sponge filter and tap water. So uh, if your ghost shrimp perish and die on you, don't feel that bad. That's why they're like 12 cents, 10 cents a piece. Um, and then, hold on, there was another. Did you grab the light? Happen to grab the light while you're up? No. <clears throat> All right. Craig uses member. Deal four month membership to give us two parts thanks greg and then abstract aquarius said how long does it take to show signs of being buried for a blue aurora shrimp after male tags female it should be instant so as soon as the eggs are fertilized she's going to drop them into her belly and that's when she's going to be considered buried uh, now if the male didn't do his job right or something like that, and they're not fertile, she'll keep them up in her saddle. Brandon says, those micros look nice. A good choice for a Opa Ula shrimp. Yeah, not, not a bad option. Um, so there is this little overflow right here. Um, I know Harley makes some 3D printed like shrimp safe guards to them. Um, we try to make some out of some of the like ammonia absorbent uh, boards that you get from like Petco. Uh, we cut up a piece. I had to like cut it into a very thin sliver uh, to make sure that it didn't plug up the overflow holes um, from them uh, dumping water over the sides of the tank. Uh, does Steven need me to come pick him up yet? No, they went back home. Oh, they're, they're already home? home? Already. Yeah. Okay. Tired and exhausted, but had a good time. Stephen P. said, first time I saw one of those was at Aquafest 2022, and it actually had a reef in it. Yep. A lot of the shows, they have a setup of them with it. They're little frag grow outs. Um, and I know a lot of people said they're pricey, but it does have the, like, this is an actual sum. It has a light that comes with it and then all the cords. So it's like, you don't have to go buy anything else. So it is a little uh convenient and real easy for those just small little ones like someone's desk like it would just make sense to have in an office and and listening to harley talk about his product when we were hanging out at aquashella he had like the option to do the cheapest he could have made these a lot cheaper and instead he wanted to make them the best so he has put as much thought and, and you know it had if there was any little tiny detail that he could have added he added it down to the fact that the lids can't have with salt water they can't have any overhang or clip on them because of the salt drip so he made the little pegs on the lids so that way they go in the tank it prevents any salt drip from going over the sides um, and you know, you don't, you don't see any addition or anything like that. And it's really nice. So it's a good little add on. It comes with the, the film cover on it. So that way it doesn't get scratched and shipping or anything like that. So I'm of course going to leave that on there until we, uh, ship it off or, uh, send it out, uh, with us when we head up to, uh, 
North Carolina for the Aquatic Expo. Find it really funny that we have probably like 30 pairs of scissors that we've bought over the years for like, you know, cutting our labels to ship out. But I can only ever find scaping scissors ever when I need scissors. It's, it's ridiculous. They're probably all stashed in Layla's room for her craft. Yeah. Every time I'm like, Layla, you know where a pair of scissors is. She comes back within like a minute or two. So she, she knows where they all are. But th this is the box for the little micro tank. I know this one's got the black trim. Uh, I had scaped the white trim one uh, at Aquashella, and that one was sold, and they didn't want the box. So I had a leftover box. Harley had a leftover tank, and we decided to recycle it rather than throw it away and get a whole new box. So um, one little thing I have already gone through and done, depending on, like, I don't know how much I moved the tank. It looks really good on camera. But I have gone through and glued the entire thing no. into one piece. What are you doing? <laughs> J-Dub just said, great to see you guys make it into several KG Tropical videos from Aquashella. I have been waiting for that. I really hope it wasn't a nice surprise. <laughs> I hope they left that out. Oh, you dancing? Is that what you're thinking about? I hope it's not. That's the I, only thing I could think of, but I want to talk escaping. I want to say we have more tanks featured on like Jason at Primetime Aquatics and then like anybody that's come to our house than anyone else on their channel because we have so many tanks. But not <laughs> only that, but like Jason has done several of his favorite Aquascape tanks at Aquashella and we always get like one or two tanks in there. And I was giving him uh, a little bit of a... Uh, of crap because he never goes to the carob sea booth and i'm like did you see my tank and they're like no and then the following year i'm like did you see shelby's tank and they're like no and i'm like you need to go check out the carob sea booth what are you doing you're missing out so um i did piece together the entire aquascape together so that's kind of what it looks like uh yeah it, it's kind of hard to like visualize it but Shelby had me worried that I wasn't going to be able to fit it in, yeah. but little did she know I was building it over this. So I kind of oh, knew I, <laughs> I took from Austin Kwan. I took a little bit of uh, advice oh, yeah. off of him because he, he uses egg crate and like the gets the dimensions. dimensions of the tank and then builds the whole scape out of the tank. So then, oh, I just broke it. I don't use as good a glue as he does, but... <laughs> I can fix that. That's no problem. So, have you ever seen that guy scape? It's cool. He's probably in some of those videos. He does a really cool scape. He's like the fifth tank in, I think, and it's like all the wood like coming at you. When I saw that, it, my mouth dropped when I saw that tank. I was like, man, that thing's cool. And um, it's just really cool to see the way he does it. So, little tip, tip. They do build them outside of it, especially if you're going to build something you know you're going to have to piece together. You definitely want to try not to do it in the tank because one like wrong move, you're scratching the side of it. So not only yeah, that, but one. you don't want super glue all over the place. So I kind of gotta hide it from you guys for a second so I can for a second can't see it. Scape it and fix it. I didn't have any more super glue. Shelby's getting the rest of the <laughs> super glue for her. Can I put an Oscar in that tank? So um, if if anyone doesn't know and doesn't watch my TikToks, this is actually the tank that I do for my TikToks. Just Harley sent me a special one from Grant that says at Shelby K Scapes. And um, I did have someone ask me if they could put an arrow one in it. And I'm hoping they were being as sarcastic as you are. Um, you never know with some people, but I just laughed and they, they liked the comments. So I'm assuming these are cute little you, stickers you that come in the Oscar package. fry in the tank for two days. There you go. Look how cute it is. I love that thing. Oh, but I have my light. This thing's really cool. There's the little LEDs. This The light in front of us is too bright to show any detail. There's the USBs on the side. Sorry. I'm probably going to break light. this again. Okay, Just trying to careful. do this. Then you got, it attaches by these little two screws in the back. So real easy to attach and adjust to the level that you need to. But this 
thing is real tiny and I love to skate because it's it's a little bit harder to try to make the illusion of this tank being bigger. Um, so that's what I try to do in every one of my escapes that I've done on my TikTok is try to make it seem like it's a bigger than a one gallon tank. Um, we sold my last one at the uh, Aquachella show and the lady's face just said it all as soon as she saw it. She was like, it's perfect. So cute. And it made my day that someone appreciated the work that we did on this. So it was really nice. I don't know what I did. We got to get serious here. Uh, oh. Brandon says, can Shelby do a reef tank with sexy shrimp in the one gallon, please? That would be awesome. Oh, man. So we actually did have a micro tank that had uh, the sexy shrimp in it. I always danced. Um, love those. But I would never recommend doing a micro reef tank because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but if you talk to Harley for longer than 30 minutes, I guarantee you he can set you up with a micro reef tank. <laughs> but I know how to do fresh water. So <laughs> if, if you want to do a saltwater one, you have to contact Harley. And um, he says it's way easier than anything. So I'm too scared. But I know one of these days I'll be doing it. It's, it's going to happen. I'm trying to read at the same time and Grant is struggling over here with this tiny thing. I messed up. I broke <laughs> it. This always happens. If you ever like put something together all uh, nice and perfect and then you break it, it's it's a hundred percent going to never go back the same way. Perfect for a red tail catfish community. Yeah. I mean it's you know pretty roomy. Uh Happy Christy that. says, love the cube. I have a five gallon similar. Yep. So these are really easy for shrimp and stuff. And to me, just doing little aquascapes because I love enjoying looking at plants. I don't even need to have anything in the tank. It's kind of a soothing when you think about it just to make it, you could even do like a bonsai um, kind of thing in it where you're just like trimming the grass all the time. <laughs> trimming the moss. The worst part is I got Super glue on my fingers. No one cares. Caprice said, are you... Pass the sand if you're oh, going to be the savage. Right. <laughs> I might as well get some work done. Caprice says, are you going to sell these on your website? So, I would take offers if somebody wanted to reach out to us tonight and said, hey, I would like to purchase that skate or something like that. <laughs> or... <laughs> Careful. I didn't I was trying I'm to sit sorry. down and you just tossed it at me. It's so right? heavy, okay? So if somebody was like, oh, we wanted this one, and they sent us a bunch of offers, um I'll go over prices and stuff like that here in a second. Uh at Aquafest, we priced it out at three hundred dollars and everybody offered us like two fifty and said they would come back and nobody came back and so Instead of listing them for 300, we listed them for 400 at Aquashella. Much bigger show, and um, we fi I figured somebody would just offer me 300, and I would get what we wanted for the tanks. Well, a lot of people were like, "Well, excuse me, I'm sorry if I'm ignorant, but why is this 400 dollars?" So a lot of people thought just the tank was 400 dollars, and no, what we were selling were the tanks fully aquascaped with the rock, the stone, the stand, and plants already included. Plus, I was throwing in a free bag of shrimp. So there was yeah, a lot a included <laughs> for the $400, and you could have talked me down for $300 and gotten everything included. Um, in the one little micro tank that I had done, there was a vine in there. And there was at least eight inches of this vine. But the vine is worth like $10 an inch. Did you sell that with the tank? Yeah. No. We still have a lot of it running around the house. But it was a very rare bulbitis. Very small. The smallest little vine plant that I've ever been able to work with and actually grow without algae growing on it as well. And people were like, oh, I don't understand. Well, the tanks were 150 there's at least $150 worth of plants in each tank. Uh, Shelby's at least $150 worth of tissue culture cups. I maybe only had $100 worth of plants in mine. So $250. But then on top of that, the stone and all of the little time and effort that it took, it took me 
like six hours to piece together the little micro tank that we had at Aquafest and Aquashella Dallas. It was a lot of little effort and little fine tuning with the tweezers and getting things to stick and be glued and worked with exactly where I want them to go. And then not only that, the chiseling and stuff of the rock, it's not easy and you can go through a lot of stuff. I'm going to talk about that with working with the Dragonstone here in a second. But, you know, anywhere in the ballpark of like $300 to $400 is about where we're looking to sell these tanks at. So... Thank you, Vibes, for the four ninety nine dollars Super Chat. says, how many Frontosas for that aquarium? I figured two. I can't read. F times six canister, or F, would it be... F times six, the fluval canister. Oh, okay. Or would it be better for discus? <laughs> these aquariums, are you talking about the ones on the, at the... No, but I'm talking about these. Okay, I'm Everybody's sure going to make know. jokes about this. <laughs> Uh, maybe three fun posts. I'm going to make sure it's really filled up here. At the end, I'm going to go see how many koi I can fit into this. <laughs> so stay tuned. Oh, man. And then uh, Dee Dee did say she uh, already appreciates the rock flower Grant has created. That is beautiful. So I say time, it looks like a lotus flower. One time I made a rose out of chocolate ice cream, and I just did not get the appreciation that I yeah, thought I would from weird. that. weird. It took a lot of effort. Like I had to keep <laughs> freezing so... the ice cream. It was chocolate ice melt. cream, though. Like you do a different color. <laughs> Maybe red ice cream or even vanilla. Come on, you chose the one that looks like. <laughs> Can't appreciate. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Where was I? All right, back. <laughs> Back to the Dragonstone skate tank. So we're both working with Dragonstone tonight. Is that is that your weapon mm -hmm. of choice for tonight as well? All right. So this is mostly clay-based rock. Uh, when trying to work with it, we have a little... It's on our YouTube shorts. Um, also, these tanks are on our... The ones we were talking about in the past are on our TikToks. Uh, so if you'd like to check those out, uh, you can find them there. Um, however, the Dragonstone skate tank that I'm referring to is on our YouTube <laughs> shorts and it's the, uh, one where all the Dragonstone is like cut into spears and sticking straight up in the air. Um, kind of like upside down stalactites for a cave. A lot of people don't know that I destroyed like 400 pounds of Dragonstone just to get all those little shapes and you know, now there isn't like 300 pounds of dust just being, you know, wasted out of that. I got a lot of rubble and, and stuff like that that I'll use for future scapes. And then a lot of pieces you just know are not going to break into like good little pieces. So we had to go through like 400 pounds of uh, Dragonstone. And it was a lot of trial and error. I'm sure if I were to do it now, I could probably do it with like 200 pounds of Dragonstone just trying to escape and, and make all these little tiny pieces and stuff like that. Uh, our technique has definitely gotten a lot better, but this is hands down the messiest aquascaping stone to work with. It's super dirty. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the teams from Chicago uh, took their dragon stone to the car wash to clean it and instead of worrying about it dirtying up the tank and stuff like that. So um, how long does Aquachar last? Six months in a tank before um, it, it said that you should uh, pull it out, clean it, and then put it back into the tank. Uh, you don't want to clean all of it at the same time. You want to leave some of it kind of in there to season and colonize the, the other Aquachar if you're using it for a biomedia, um, but if you're just using it to remove, you know, chemicals and stuff like that, every six months, pull it out of the water, throw in it, throw it in some hydrogen peroxide, let it sit, and then you can recharge it, wash it with some RO water, and throw it back into the tank. So, uh, back to the Dragonstone. It is super messy. Uh, Shelby has one time forgot to wash it, but glued all of the Dragonstone together for her boost dominant tank. And we were able to just take it outside, put it on an incline 
and blast it with the hose to get it all uh, nice and cleaned out. So it is one of the messiest uh, scape stones you can work with. I've got a bunch of little bits and pieces right here. Um, I already rinsed thoroughly earlier today, so that way I didn't have to worry about it. I didn't really uh, rinse or clean any of this Dragonstone. So when I flood the tank, it is going to be a little bit dirty. But the thing about this, it's super easy to do 100% water changes. Uh, so I'll probably just drip with a five-gallon bucket water in with an airline hose and then have another airline hose on the way out so I can just do spot cleaning and stuff like that. But uh, I was going to try and do this uh, backwards, but I think I'm going to save myself the embarrassment and just pour it in the right way because <laughs> I don't think I can do it right regardless of it going <clears throat> forwards or backwards. But we got to get this thing. Crib Keeper said, I'd love to have one of your aquascape tanks. And then J Dub said, "Having one done by you guys, priceless." So that's and what I thought would be the case, but we just don't have that many fans at Aquafest. Yeah. <laughs> Aqua Shelva, though, we did, we did have the tank the tank sold. So and then Harley said they do sell them empty too. Yes, so we do. We need to get them get empty the on the website, but I need to get with you, Harley, on shipping. Like, what do you use to ship these suckers out? Um, but I'm sure we could figure it out. Tank is good We've for sea monkeys. We've got $15 flat rate shipping, so I think we'll just have to adjust the prices of the tanks to work for that. <laughs> Richard said, I can see shrimp and least killies in Shelby's tank, for sure. I have done several TikToks that have the least killies. I have put a fungulus chrysotis in it. Um, all of these go back. Um, a siren... Um, you'd be surprised. Those things don't move. They just want to sit in the mud. Um, but, and a newt, like, if I had one singular newt, that thing would be in heaven here. You're always getting hand fed. They don't move either. They just chill. Like, put a guppy grass in it. <laughs> Those things just lay on the guppy grass. They don't move around much. All right. So, I'm, I'm quite happy with that, with the sand in, like, laid out like that. So, I, I found out at this last Aquashella that I have a pet peeve, and it is the substrate matching the hardscape. I, it really bothers me in, in aquascaping when the substrate doesn't match the, the hardscape. And my, my reasoning for this is at, at very early on in aquascaping, they try to throw a bunch of rules at you. There's the, you don't want anything too centered. There's the rule of thirds. There's the no cut pieces. And a lot of those, like the, the cut pieces will bother me and stuff like that. But the rule of thirds and stuff to center, if, if it looks good and, and there's really no way around it, I, I don't like try to follow those rules too, too much. But one of the rules was, you know, you don't want to mix your hardscape. <clears throat> and I guess it's okay to mix the woods to a certain degree, um, but you don't want to mix the stones. So... In a same scape, you don't want a bunch of dragon stone and a bunch of uh, mountain stone and like some rubies and like all these little gems and stuff thrown in there. It's not very realistic whatsoever, not with the gems, but even just mixing two different kinds of stones, this doesn't really happen. Uh, yeah, there's two different land masses that can crash over each other and make mountains and stuff like that. You will find it, but. Uh, for the most part, the, the stones kind of relatively match. There isn't too much contradicting color and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'm sure there's some good examples out there to prove me wrong. But for the most part, uh, when you go to the state parks and stuff like that, all the sand and everything like that, it all matches the mountains. So the mountains break apart, the rubble falls down, the big boulders at the bottom of the mountains match the mountains. And then the sand at the bottom of the mountains, that's just smaller pieces of rubble that's been broken down into smaller bits. So it's all one, you know, layered out and detailed um, landscape. So it should be one of the one of the same colors. Um, and then so for this scape, instead of using like a white substrate, I've gone and used the Karim C 
uh, the uh, man. You didn't look at the color before you. No. I think it's the rosette gold. Isn't no, it? it's not. Rosette gold. I don't it's know on where the back it says with it all the bags. Sunset gold. I was close. Close. So <laughs> the sunset gold. It's not white. It kind of has the little bit of looks and coloration. Um, at Aquashella, we can be known for making a little bit of noise. We like to smash a lot of rock and, and bits and pieces and stuff like that. Um, I like to avoid doing that, however, with the Dragonstone. Because it's such a clay base, you're going to end up breaking, say, a bigger piece like this. And in it is going to have a good, I, I don't know, a whole cup worth of dust uh, if, if you want to dilute it into water. But it, it's it's going to take a, an awful lot of water to rinse that out and get that off nice and clean. So I try to avoid making the super fine detail uh, and stuff like that with the Dragonstone. But it still needs to be done. So I did. I went through the bottom of the barrel and I took out all the bits and pieces that kind of looked like they were spiky uh, or some type of good texture or something to them that I could use in the scape. And I went through, I don't think Shelby has it, but we do have another container. We have tons of different containers of little aquascaping uh, materials and stuff like that from different projects and whatever. But I went through and I threw all of the rubble like that looked like round boulders or that was too flat and I, I didn't think was going to be a fit for this aquascape. And then I threw the rest of it into a cup. And now, obviously, I didn't get all of it. Here's like a rounder piece. But then again, um, nature, as Sam posted in one of his videos, uh, is the uh, Mother Nature is the best aquascaper and even she isn't perfect. And there is little bits and pieces like these round boulders in an aquascape, similar uh, scenario in nature um, with these same stones. So you're going to have some type of a mixture, but for the most part, everything's going to be rather uniform in style. You got anything to add to it, Sheldon? No, I wasn't listening. But does aquachar straight. help keep blackbeard algae away? Um. So... Aquachar is going to help with filtration and stuff like that. Blackbeard algae is going to come from several different things. Uh, Blackbeard algae loves flow. So if you have, uh, say, rock or hardscape or something like that that's in front of an overflow or your uh, canister filter or something like that, that's going to end up building up a little bit of blackbeard algae if your tank isn't getting a proper amount of water changes, if it's getting too much light, if your tank's getting overfed, there's a lot of things that can cause blackbeard algae, but flow is a big one uh, of those factors where it's going to grow at. That's why it grows on sponge filters. Uh, that's why it grows on Anubis leaves is because they're so ancient, they never wither and die off. So they're just one little bit of structure inside of your tank and if it's getting too much flow it's going to attract that blackbeard algae so um the aquachar is a good additive to the uh biomedia that you have but uh chances are it's not going to make the blackbeard algae go away all on its own um manual removal pulling it out you can spray it with uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, and then the other thing is, is there's a product from Brightwell. It's called Razor. And hands down, it is the best product that I've used to kill any kind of algae out there. Uh, just the only problem is it does tend to kill off shrimp. So uh, remove them suckers before dosing it and you, you should have success getting it away. But... If you don't clean the filters, if you don't reduce the flow or the lighting or something like that, the blackbeard algae can come back. So you, you got to take all those things into consideration when dealing with blackbeard algae. It is like the worst algae to deal with. JL Aquatics asks, did you all sell well at Aquashella? We did all right. I don't think we're too focused on selling. 
Um, in the past at Dallas, we've done a little bit better. Um, but we cannot complain. The trip was paid for. It was more than worth it. We'll be going back next year. Um, I just think that uh, this time of the year and with everything going on, uh, people weren't as buy hungry as they have been in the past. So um, it was still a really good show for us. Next next live stream, we'll have some trophies, hopefully, to show it off. So, so I want a California newt. They're so cute. Oh, I'm so mad you're not wearing the new shirt I got you. I looked for it. It's hanging up in your closet. I looked for it. So upset. It's the one that says I, I, mm -hmm. I don't, don't eat Don't talk about it. Wear it the next time. I didn't time. say nothing. Didn't say nothing. Nothing. Orchid said, I want a California nude. They're so cute. I got to find California nudes now. Grant was talking dirty to you. All about dirt. Different types of dirt. <laughs> Lady Dan said, sand must match rocks. It is the best. Um, a little thing. Also, a new tip. I know Grant was talking about them matching. Uh, but Dragonstone also, and like different um, of the same stone will have different coloration, which usually tends to mean that those rocks were not in the same location because they have different sediment that's grow uh, that made them. Um, so a lot of times you'll have Dragonstone can be like darker in color and then real light in color. Um, sometimes you don't want to match that either because like you'll have like, especially if you're trying to piece something together like his, if you have like one giant, like really light brown one in the thing, it's just going to take your focus off the whole scape itself. So you really do want to match the coloration of the rocks as well. Uh, Mountain stone and serious stone um, actually look pretty identical, but you can tell, um, I wish I had those out here. They have lines in them, um, different grooves. And if you were to do an aquascape and you want to build them up, you want to try to match those grooves together and not have them contradicting the same with dragonstone. You kind of want all the holes and um, everything to line up. So it's not like going back and forth as, as if it was like woven with two different colors. So um, it just makes it for a more aesthetically pleasing tank than something that kind of like draws your eyes. So say I did dragonstone in the tank and I had all these one pieces going this way. And then all of a sudden the other ones were going the other way. It's just going to, draw your attention away from the actual beauty of the tank. So this helps a little bit. Um, I've lost <clears throat> the ability to super glue. So we're throwing the filler rocks in. JL Aquatics says my booth was right next to the feature stage. You gave me a heart attack. That's funny. Yeah. I, I was yelling at, at my booth, which wasn't too far. And I was like telling the people that were standing there, I was like, yeah, that's my boyfriend. He's making all that noise. <laughs> and they're like, I wondered what that was. <laughs> this is me. Oh. Hulk. Because he says, be punk rock with escaping. <laughs> uh, we definitely color outside the lines a little bit with our escaping. It's not to a T, but some things will always help in aquascaping other than some people. Now, I do love... Like, I like gimmicky kind of tanks sometimes, so I like to make fun ones like that. Um, obviously, when it win any awards, but it is also fun. You know, you make them a little bit more sentimental. I saw one today, I think um, it was Chris Biggs who posted it, and it was like a building, and then they took all these trees and um, kind of had it woven. It was broken down building, like as if the nature had taken it over. And they had taken it and done that and then let the plants grow out. And it looked absolutely awesome. <laughs> Reading. Abstract says, how long do you keep the aqua chart in the peroxide? Um, I have never actually recharged it because... I've, I've only used it as an emergency situation. I would imagine like an hour. Anything after an hour is kind of overkill. Um, anything under 15 minutes is definitely not enough time. So uh, I, I'm just going to say if it's something you're doing every six months, I would, I would aim for an hour. 
Uh, you can message Brian Covey on Facebook, and he would be more than happy uh, to help answer any of your Aquachart questions. I feel like it's an answer I should know, but uh, I'm sorry. I've never had to actually do that or looked into doing it. Right. Crips says, I need some of that Brightwell razor and try it out. I have Blackbeard algae um, forming in the 75-gallon. I can't stand that stuff. Yeah. I'm so lucky. Like, uh, it's, it's the worst. <laughs> it took years to get rid of when we were first in the hobby because we did not understand quarantining plants. You think you see, like, oh, it looks healthy. It looks good. There's nothing wrong with it. Tricked you in a month or so with the Blackbeard algae. <laughs> so we have a pet store that we really thought was, you know, really good and everything like that. And it just, one of the things that they do not worry about or care or anything like that is Blackbeard algae. So uh, in time, we were like, why do we keep getting all this algae? I don't understand. Well, it's because... Most of their plants and most of their tanks have it. Their entire system is all built in in one. So if it gets it in one tank, it's easily spores. It can spread into the other tanks. I've lost the cap for this. Were you using this also? I was, but I don't know where I put the cap. Good luck. Okay, well, we're using it. <laughs> Nirvana Aquatics says, I like using sphagnum moss as filler for escaping. Don't have to cover it up because it's not as obvious as white cotton balls. That's a good idea. Instead of like using cigarette filter or cotton. Oh, I'm going to have to try that out. That's a good idea. So that brings us to another point of aquascaping. So a lot of times when um, you're aquascaping and you're trying to create a structure like that, you think... And it's like so hard to get them to fit perfectly. Um, you'll have um, just a little bit of cracks here and there. Best thing is moss. That is the best thing to cover up the little flaws in any tank. Um, Grant's always got to remind me of that when we're doing something. I'm like, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. And he's like, don't worry. We'll cover it with moss. No one will see it. So I have learned now to repair the cracks with moss. And it it does make it look so much better and more realistic, too. But Because um, there's always cracks in nature with moss growing through it. Sphagnum moss isn't a bad idea, though. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to so, try that. Geez. Did you just break something? No, we're good <laughs> so far. Because what we're working with... I oh, just added some sand. Turn this down. That's what it is. Hold on. Hold on. I said hold on. There we go. Should be no glare on it now. Maybe. But I added a couple rocks onto the sides, trying to fill it out. I just got all the detail work right now. I've already put some thought into plants, but uh, I don't know if they're going to work out the way I want them to. I was going to do the mini Java ferns, but... I don't know if they're mini enough. Yeah, I, but probably they're really small. Course, they do grow it's, out. The the wind love though is super tiny. The wind love might work out. So I'm thinking about wind loving it up. Joe, recently I added in layers with my cherry shrimp, and the shrimp now stay hidden. Could it be that the inlers are very energetic? What could I do for the shrimp to be in the open again? Take the fish out. It's 100% the fish are stressing out the shrimp and they're worried about getting eaten. Um, now, you add more plants and stuff like that, the shrimp are just going to hide in with the plants. Eventually, they can breed and you can have more in the tank and you'll get some that, you know, have adapted and just don't care about the fish. And, you know, it just takes some of the other shrimp, some encouragement and, you know, some other shrimp being dumber than they are to, to be out in the open for a while and then eventually maybe the fish are picking off some of them but for the most part uh this is a big reason why i preach not to keep fish with with the shrimp because they'll either hide all together or stop breeding or you know become quick snacks so 
it doesn't always work out the way we want it to. And then Freaky Fish Lady said a little bit. Oh, back to that real quick. Um, did you say to add plants? More uh, and more plants will make them a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, but they're going to hide in the plants still. They're not going to you know, be out in the open. Yeah, but if you have long, flowy ones, usually the endlers stay up top. And if you have enough coverage over, um, taller plants might help. But, you know, it's a long shot. Uh, Freaky Fish Lady said, Little Bird told me you may have mosaic plant. Said, need and love it for my pond, but it's not on your site. We can change that tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah, I'll put those on the site. We do have those. We usually only bring those to shows, um, but we can put it on the site. It's just they do not fare well in shipping, but I think that we have a way to get it there I, I think safely. Our, our way to package it up and bring it to the shows is good enough that we can package it the same way and ship it out. So. Yeah. Lady Diane says, local fish store here in town grows it in every tank proudly. Grows I'm what? Blackbeard algae. Oh. Yeah. JL Aquatic says, looking good, Grant. Maybe I should use one of those as my showcase. It's not a bad option. Um, if you're wanting to, to, to breed out and, and uh, grow out some shrimp a different way, though, 10 gallons is a little bit better, but if you're just trying to show a couple shrimp, there's not a lot of places to hide in this tank. Even though it, lo it looks like there's a lot of places, the shrimp are too big to hide in them, so it could work. And then uh, June said, what would you stock it with? So personally, I, and I hate advertising something that we can't sell right now, but the aquatic isopods would be such a good hit in these tanks. Um, the other one would be Opa Ula, I think would look and be incredible in one of these tanks. I don't have to put plants in the tank. We could set it up as, you know, a brackish tank. Um, they These tanks are powerful enough to run. That's what I'm going to do. The next tank we're switching. I'm going to escape an Opa. I know, but I... I've got issues. I've got ideas, and I, I got to execute them. As long as you know, um, you have them. But yeah, no. The next one I'm gonna do is an Opa Ula, all in one with a macro algae. I gotta find. I know someone would have given me macro algaes at the last show, but why was I not thinking to put them in a missed opportunities? Story of my life. But yeah, no, it's definitely okay for a small amount of shrimp. Harley told me he started out with six shrimp in one of his tanks and now has 20 in it. So they can definitely breed and reproduce in them. Uh, again, though, you're not going to get a ton of breeding in action. Um, but, you know, a little bit here and there is not that bad. Night Owl says, bring me a mosaic to North Carolina, please. We will have them. I'll have a lot of mosaics with us in North Carolina. They're doing really well right now outside in our tubs. Um, June said, I didn't see a turtle on your site, Grant. Can we fix that? No. Uh, no, unfortunately. So the story behind the turtles is we had turtles for six years. They finally bred for us. We got our license and permitting. We were able to sell five of them. And then the following season, they made it so that way there's no new owners of the turtles in florida so i uh i'm pretty sure the koi are enjoying the 500 dollars turtle snacks that they get but we we cannot breed or sell the turtles anymore sadly life and liquid says have you put any new inhabitants in any of your ponds this year um so yes uh mississippi hippie gave us some um, purple mosaics or what, what were they Nebulas. Nebulas. Steel nebulas. Steel nebulas. Those are actually exploding in the ponds right now. Um, there was two different generations of babies swimming around, squirming around in that tank, uh, or pond, I should say. Um, we've added the blue uh, Miyoki 
uh, rice fish. Um, we have the sailfin mollies. We have, man, uh, I threw some of the uh, prey cocks, the dwarf neon rainbows out there. Um, and then there's some platies and some other different types of endlers and guppies. Too many different types to name. Um, but the, yeah, we're, we're going to be uh, expanding a lot more still. I know there's like the time that the year's already ticking and we're almost halfway through the year, but there's there's still more stuff I want to throw outside and then have to prepare and get ready for everything inside. It's going to be a lot of fun. Nathan says, that's like the only tank you can scape slash plant and stay totally dry well. And the longer skinny one, I think it's two and a half gallon. I think I missed something here. j -Dub says, you leave in any room for water in that tank. Yeah. That's that's how a lot of our tanks are. Is is I, I, I use up a lot of the space. There's not a lot of space for the this fish to swim around in, but. JL Aquatics says, do you breed any plecos? We used to breed plecos. Um, right now we do have plecos for sale. They're bred by a local. Um, we have the albino uh, short fins right now on the website. And then we do have a couple of different ones too, but they're really young. So we've been waiting for a while. We used to breed the uh, bristle nose albino long fin plecos uh, back in the day it was like one of the first things we had in these 55 gallon tanks that we got from someone which was like one of our first like racks I'm working on some false zebra plecos and um something else just just more ancestrous that's it yeah, we got the red, uh, red plecos. Uh, got some long fins going again, but they're not going yet. They're just in there growing. Where's that lid? That was such a good idea. Escape it out of the tank. To make sure that I'm not going. And it comes with this little film on it, so I can scape on top of that without actually damaging anything. And then, like, one thing I did wrong in the first scape... And I, I wanted to avoid doing it in this scape was I got a little tiny bit of um, super glue on the front of the glass. And, you know, with how small these tanks are, a little tiny bit of super glue looked like a giant uh, gash in the tank. So um, we were able to get that out by using some um, little tiniest bit of rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. We were able to just barely get it out. So JL Aquatic says, if you need Pleco food, just let me know and I got you. Right now we have so much food for Plecos, it's ridiculous. Um, but eventually we'll, we'll definitely need some, so we'll put you up. Jamie says, after you escape that tank, it would make a great tank to do a shrimp pitchers in. It's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, not I a bad one. That. That's a good idea. What kind of glue are you using? We are using the Loctite Super Glue Gel Control. This is, this light is awful. Hold on. Sorry. Oh, my God. It's even worse. So, there we go. We've tried quite a few different really. glues, <laughs> and this is by far... One of the glues that dries and sets the quickest. We're also using this activator spray. Um, I, if Shelby could turn it around, I could read it. Um, what kind it is for you. Uh, the 2P10 Professional Wood Formula Activator activates the curing of adhesive. So this right here basically instantly sets the... Uh, Super glue, mm -hmm. so that way it hardens and you don't have to hold it for nearly as long. Yeah. You know what? Instead of finding the right pieces, yeah. I'm just going to fill it with rubble. 
sometimes you can't find the right rocks and it's not worth all the hassle so you just fill it in with a little bit of rubble and everything's good you didn't need that rock a great aquascaper once told me do you need it does it have to be there if not move on carbon says this weekend i had people over now they want to get into shrimp they do not have an rodi system so I think I want to get them some Neos to get them started. What is the best Neos for introducing to people? Their favorite color. Hands down, if you find any of the, um, I mean, unless their favorite color is orange, then maybe find a different friend. Like I I've, I've know one person, their favorite color is orange, and they're, they're just, stay away from them. Um, no, um, pick their favorite color. The only reason why I said don't pick orange is because like orange is like the worst neo color out there. Green is a little bit as unstable as orange, but at least it's green. Like green's an actual good color to work with. Um, so what I would do is ask them their favorite color, find somebody that has a homebred source for that color, and then uh, set them up with that. Uh, teach them how to use a little bit of prime. Uh, dechlorinator and take care of the uh, chlorine or chloramine in your water system and then everything after that should be um, you know easy mode for them since they don't want to do an RO unit or anything like that so passing one says activator spy fumes oh let me tell you I got so nauseous in um, Dallas when we were aquascaping because of the fumes from the activator, it was, it is very, very strong and I cannot stand it. Honestly, I wish that super glue dried faster and you don't have to use it, but doesn't. And Nathan said, where do, or can I get the activator stuff? I honestly don't know. As much of my stuff that went missing at the show uh, from the person that I have this from, I was like not concerned that they didn't ask for this back. So I figured it was a mutual trade that I lost a bunch of hammers and aquascaping tools and got the activator. And it's it this one can has lasted quite some time. So Amazon. Yeah. Um, oh, and a hardware store maybe. They sell like little kits. So maybe your local hardware store, I just call them a Walmart, but they have a ridiculous price for that. I would just, I would just go through Amazon. I mean, this one can has lasted us over a year and I don't, I wouldn't say we aquascape a lot, but we definitely aquascape more than like the average hobbyist. So the, the one can last less quite some time. All right, so two minutes to go. June says, my orange neos are breeding like crazy. My best shrimp tank. They might be breeding like crazy, but there's probably 50 of them in there at a time that are ugly. Unless you got our orange shrimp before I broke my leg, then those ones probably could do all right. But I lost my best colony, and I'm having to start from scratch, so... Overall, though, the, the orange neos generally are not the best. Nathan, They're no one's favorite color. Nathan said, like Nathan said, and thank you for the glue info. I was going to ask what y'all think is the best glue. I'm currently using Gorilla Glue, but it takes too long to Gor stick. Gorilla Glue is horrible. It yeah. was the worst. I, we bought the, because they always recommend like the gel formula. I found the cap. It was on my side. It was your fault. It was my fault. And, uh, but it just, it did not work at all. It doesn't even matter if you put the activator on. It's too thick of a glue. Um, and it takes says 30 seconds to dry, and it did not do that with activator. And <laughs> so I was a little disappointed with that. Uh, oh, this is the best glue that we've used so far. Um, if you want to take the whole secret and trick of us scaping on the lids for the, the size and frame of the scape, um, the person that was scaping out of the scape and built his entire aquascape and moved it into the tank uh, was using the 
uh, glue from uh, Boat Reef Supply. So they have their own um, brand of super glue, and that's what he was using. So instead of us buying more of that from Home Depot or the dollar store, uh, I'll be buying a whole pound of the super glue off of Boat Reef Supply. All right. Well, it's time. Oh. I'm flies when it I can't believe it's been a whole hour already. Hey everyone. It's hey Greg. Shelby. Hey. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Can't complain. So what do uh, you got for me? Uh, I posted it like five minutes ago if Shelby can find it. She's getting better at this. Yeah, she is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh if i were to get your uh black tie bees off your website uh and i wanted to uh turn them into a tie tie bee using one of the taiwan bees uh does it matter which uh taiwan bee i choose for it is it gonna give me different results so basically you only have three choices here do you want more blue do you want red or do you want black so if you want the blue, you use like shadow pandas or blue bolts or shadow mazuras. If you're not worried about the blue and you just want black, you use King Kongs, pandas. Um, if you want black and you're not worried about the blue, you'll still get more black tie tie bees by using, you know, uh, shadow pandas and blue bolts than you would red King Kongs and stuff like that. But um, using like a red King Kong would be, your best chance of getting red tie tie bees. You'll still get blacks, but um, if you use black or blue, you may never get reds or, you know, one out of a hundred or one out of a, out of a thousand. So um, it, it's very uh, it, dependent on if you want red or blue or black, you're going to get black regardless, but you can focus more for more blues or you can focus for reds. That's really up to you which color Taiwan bee you want to use. Okay, so it's just a color thing. It won't affect the pattern at all? No, it the, the pattern is not really going to matter too much um, unless you're trying to do headgear. Then I would do Missouri, but it doesn't matter if you use a Shadow Missouri or a Red King Kong Missouri. They're, they're still going to be you know better for the headgear and building up those patterns that way. But um, for the most part, you're, you're not going to get that much of a, an increase from using one or the other. They're all almost the same when you break them down genetically. Oh, okay. Super cool. Thank you. Yeah. And while you're still here, a little teaser for next week. Um, we are going through, and it's taken us a little bit of time just to get settled. Uh, we do have another show in a couple of weeks in North Carolina. It's kind of like reason why we're aquascaping on our live stream is to kill two birds with one stone because these needed to be done. We don't have a lot of time, and we're doing the live stream. Thought we'd share some tips and tricks and stuff like that with y'all. But next week, I'd like to do a little recap over uh, the shrimp contest. And for shrimp, uh, I almost called these shrimp keepers question of the week. For crib keepers <laughs> question of the week, uh, I'll be going over Tim's scorecards uh, or judges sheets for the contest on what he can do to improve for uh, the contest in Daytona. Uh, and I also have a bit of a surprise. I'm going to try and get that laid out and worked out for Tim beforehand as well. So, um, that I think covers everything for this week. Thanks for uh, popping up here as usual, Tim. Yeah. Thank you for having me up. All right, man. You take care. And I guess back to aquascape and almost done with this hardscape. So yeah. you have a good one, man. Yep. Thank you. All right, so almost done here. I do have a little bit more detail work I'm going to fiddle with here in a second. Jail Aquatics said, I had someone take some caves and food the second day while I was out talking to vendors. Terrible. Yeah, so we also had some shrimp go missing as well from our, uh, our booth area at the end of the show. Uh, it's one of those things where it, it's sad it happens. Uh, it's part of the reason why we don't even like to set up our table or our booth until the uh, very first day that it's 
running it up. Um, we had the micro tanks on our booth for the first couple of days. And Adam, who runs Aqua Shell, he's like, Grant, you got more more stuff for your booth, right? This isn't it. And I'm like, yeah. Every time we put up our booth early, we go from 10 Pink Flamingo Crips down to 8. So I, I just... I, it's a lot easier for us to just set it up in the morning than have to deal with counting and figure out what went missing and and whatnot. So every time, yeah. Uh, there was also a couple of the uh, smaller t- uh, pots of plants that I had put on top of my tank. That every time I've been down to grab something out of a bin, for some reason, one of those seemed to be missing, and I had counted and put four on top, and it just seemed like just one person. You know, it only takes one person to be terrible. Um, Nirvana says BSI brand super glue and activator is the best. I've tested all of them. The BRS? BSI. Oh. I don't know what that one is. Yeah, I don't know either. That's pretty cool. Passing West said, did you all say those little tanks are 400? That's- so that's fully scaped with rock, stone, the sand, all of our time you can see i've already spent an hour i know i'm talking and stuff like this but i've already done a lot of time just sorting the stone building the aquascape before i put it into place and everything like that so it was 400 with all that and i was throwing in a free bag of shrimp that came with 13 shrimp in it so and nobody wanted to be a smart aleck and go oh can i get the blue bolts i would have given you the blue bolts but nobody did it so (laughs) DD said, my oranges have done very well. Got them before I knew you two, but they have hung in there. They're all, they were called pumpkins. I love this one. Gorilla Glue is dries instantly if you get it on your skin <laughs> every time. Which every makes time. no sense to me. It's like it, it, it activates to skin touch only. But yeah, you're, you're oh, right. So maybe it was the BRS. Gina says, I'll be bringing BRS super thick, super glue at the sell at the clash we always needed super glue <laughs> we're gonna get harassment from scotty in person in a couple of weeks to join the table at the clash it's coming <laughs> what i said we're gonna get harassment in person in a couple of weeks for getting a table at the clash we're gonna have to book it like right before we show up and be like, you didn't you didn't know Scotty? We got a table. Hey Melanie. Says I'm so late, but here to say hi. Recovering from escaping disaster. Hopefully you got that solved. So sorry. I hate when those happen. You were very well missed at Aquashella. It was not the same. Oh no, says, makes me so upset. Such a waste of time. All day spent on black water scape and it all floated on me when I was filling the tank. That's another trick. And let me tell you that awesome creator scape that I did. Um, I loved it, but I knew that there was no water going in that tank because there's no way those pieces of wood were not going to float because they were very soft wood. Um, so a lot of wood is very tricky to know whether it will sink or float um i've had some that i've soaked forever and it never sunk um and I, it's so hard to do like especially like a black water where you're trying to hide and just do sticks um to put rocks in there but like that's the best way is to make sure that there's heavy rocks and even then those can break and then it'll float up it is a disaster when it happens I'm so sorry that it happened to you um we've had lots of times where we had to make sure that it's there that's a big reason why we still use the thermal plastics um so in our skate for dallas last year that we had done we did um ghost wood which is very light very very easy to just yeah just run right across and um cups broke now <laughs> uh, so our idea that came up with for that one is um, there's a lot of little sticks that we use. Now, we could have glued it to rock, but we didn't really have the rock. And the rock that we had for that contest was sparkly rock. 
Um, and if you oh. never use that rock, it's like one of the hardest ones to break. So it was really getting frustrating. We had to come up with a better idea on what to do for the little tiny twigs that we were putting in the back of the skate. Can you not? I'm sorry, the tape stuck to me. No, you're, it's in my way now. And um, so, so we used a thermoplastic and we actually wrapped it around the base of the stick and then formed a mushroom underneath so that when it put it down in the sand, the sand would go into the little mushroom, so it act like a little mushroom anchor, if you've ever seen those that uh, I work at a boating store. So that's like the first thing I thought of. Um, but yeah, the sand goes in and then it holds it down. So that was like one of the best things we could have ever done is still have I that. I came up with that idea the night of putting after at Dallas, we put all of that uh, ghost wood and then stuck it into place and we're like how are we going to secure that and it came to me at nighttime i'm like i'm gonna make a bunch of mushrooms <laughs> and shelby's like i don't know what you're talking about i'm like yeah. trust me it's gonna work i'm gonna make a bunch of mushrooms as soon as we did the first one i was like oh this makes sense now well he says i love the 2p10 activator you guys are using now it's my favorite i wish it didn't smell so bad though it is it gives me such a bad headache i'm very sensitive to smells um since i like in high school years i start i can't even burn candles in the home smells are just too strong for me it makes me sick to my stomach <laughs> hmm. nothing i just forget people are watching me while i'm doing this so they can probably like <laughs> just see my eyes trying to get this screwed on in here grant isn't staying at the ice cream hotel now what? Yeah, you didn't see the comment earlier that the, the, the what did you say about Scotty? He found us a hotel that's got a pool and ice cream. And you're over here saying something bad. I didn't even hear you. I said he's going to be harassing us in a week or so about getting a table. He's not even going to know it. So I wish you were there. We missed you too, Melanie. Uh, are you going to make it out to the Orlando or? Where? Daytona? Josh had Daytona. a different Aquashella wife. It was just weird. His name was Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, Josh had a busy too. We missed Jeremy you was great. I, I thoroughly enjoyed Jeremy, but he, he was no melody. There was nobody there to keep Josh in check. You know? I mean, I You swear, know how wild Josh can get. It doesn't matter how like talented and how much you do aquascaping, you're always going to have a floating floating branch somehow and it's like the worst feeling ever we had several super red mini lugwidia float on us for the fluval contest and i was just like Yeet! we don't need that one no more <laughs> oh man can you plug it in for me where am i gonna plug it in at I it's not know. long enough right to plug there it in. it's it not can't, long enough can't go into the laptop it's not long enough Dee Dee says, I despise thieves. Why would anyone go to an event and steal? Need to have a paintball gunner and hiding them with a paint when they steal. That'd be great. I, I would love to bring my paintball gun. <laughs> Just sit in the back and wait for them. Yeah, it is, it is honestly awful because a lot of people that are at these shows are like breeders and people just trying to make a living. <laughs> you can't see anything. You'd probably, maybe if you turn off the the light that um, is shining at us. Does it have a dimmer? Yeah. Hold it. No. <laughs> oh, man. Melanie said, I started over and glued slate to the bottom and hid rocks within. I'm using a palm flower branch for the first time. Oh, I yeah, it didn't help at all. It just made us really dark, though. You did not turn us back up. <laughs> a palm flower branch. I need to see what that is. That sounds awesome. I'm, I'm excited. So I'm, I'm ex I, I, I assume that, that it's one of the seed pods that have opened up. So it's not the it seed pod. Palm flower branch. But what is a seed pod? When it opens up, it flowers. Oh, like the, oh, okay, I get it. Oh, from a palm tree. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm assuming <laughs> Not putting that's those I, together. I just landscaped for too long, and that's what I'm assuming it is. Passing wind said, I'd scape one of those little tanks with Swarovski's crystal. That is uh, expensive, uh, first of all. But um, I did, I wanted to do this tank with the, um, I have black, um, what is that? Stone, that one I specifically um, got at the store. It's not Onyx, is it? Yeah, the black Onyx. Uh, I wanted to do it for this one, but like these are to sell, and I don't want to. I don't want to give any of that away. I can't find it ever. So, all right, let's start the bidding off at one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Jamie said, "Nice scape, Grandpa. We are all team Shelby. I have Listen, barely even got it. We anywhere. took anonymous votes at Aquashella, and um, it was pretty split down the middle. So." But are I'm you claiming first, victory? <laughs> mine sold first. <laughs> I could have um, taken no. Mine sold first. They always the guy, look amazing. The guy Money from Spencer from Pet World mm -hmm. bought the tank, and then didn't want to give me the cash. He wanted to give me wood for it, and I was like, "No, give me cash." So I went and got the cash. Jail said it's starting to come together, looking really good. Well, I'm done. I'm not adding any more wood or anything like that uh to get it from point a to point b i will be going through and uh stuffing it with a little bit of paper towel and then um i'll, I'll probably plant it then i'm not gonna plant it now and then I'm glad i have to, to worry about keeping them all nice and clean before the show but passing one said there's aqua shell of wife swapping <laughs> It was up the grant. No. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Melanie said, <laughs> Jeremy is my buddy, but he can't replace me. That is true. Jeremy's great, but he can't replace Melanie. I felt like I knew him for a while. <laughs> no. He just he just fit in so well. We felt like we've known him for a long time. J-Dub says, I love Dragonstone, but recently did some cool scapes with Elephant Skin Stone. Looks great once some algae forms in its cracks. I, I had I love an Elephant Stone scape that was on its way to algified and, and look all great, but I dropped it on its face. Why are you handing that to me? It's my gift to you. My donation. You're clean right. rocks. They're clean They're rocks. They're all dirty anyway. They're clean. They're nice. Maybe. All right. Are you, you going to keep up with chat? You want, me to get, you want me to go through chat? I'll go through chat. Nano says, uh, set traps. Those exploding blue dye packs when you open the pack. <laughs> Funny as can be. Oh, man. Lady Day and said, me too. Of going to Daytona, so jealous of all the events happening, and I have to wait for months for Daytona. It comes way faster than you think, though. Obsidian, yeah, maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it was Obsidian, not Onyx. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> JL Aquatics said 151 all day. <laughs> Passing wind said nobody's more team Shelby than Grant. Uh, Nathan's palms. I didn't read that before. I put it up the there. The tank is just right in my face. A dollar fifty per gallon since it's already scaped. It's technically used. So, <laughs> crap. Here you go. Here's your little thing, and you can focus so I can do I something read. with this. I'm just gonna jump on the. You can't YouTube. read it. No, it's way, it's way too old. small. Get an old grant. But. I have no fear. The neighbor kid just roasted Grant today about how old he's getting. <laughs> he thinks I'm 60. <laughs> it's so funny. And to be fair, he thought I was 35. So that also hurt my feelings. <laughs> you know how sensitive us women are about our, our age here. I think everyone is really sensitive about their age. Well, we're all caught up in chat. That, that makes my life a lot easier, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. So, hit me, hit me with the questions now. Hit me with. I can handle it. And now we're demonetized. 
<laughs> How's it going, Matt? Nice of you to join us tonight. You missed me skating. Tonight. I know. I'm look how done. fast you did it. I'm over here struggling. Well, I, I have yet to do something like this, so this is going to be the first time. It's not like a, my my typical scape, so it's it's stressing me out a little bit. Ben said I could just stand next to him <laughs> and his other old guys, and people will never overguess your age. <laughs> I definitely look younger when I go out to the fish club meetings, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And then Crypt Keeper asks, Matt, can you add the uh, fish fam calendar the day that TBOE caught up in chat? <laughs> we get an award for it. Uh, Caprice asks, are you going to be carrying these on your website? Uh, yeah, we need to just add these up on the website. Uh, Harley, if you're still listening, I thought you, you answered that. I thought I did too. It's no, up here you're again. Terrible. So probably didn't. You probably went to go answer it and then answered twenty other questions instead. I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll be carrying the tanks on the website. If you want the scapes individually, you can email us and we'll ship those out before the show or you can get them at the show. Up to you. Uh, Nirvana Aquatic. Someone at Aquashala thought I was a teenager. I know I have a baby's face, but I'm 28. People just aren't good at guessing ages is what I'm saying. Well, Crypt Keeper is 32, and he looks like he just graduated high school. So <laughs> people definitely don't look their age sometimes. Um, GD said when you get long in the tooth, and still kicking, it makes you be a bit more proud of your age. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I read it right. I, I don't know what it means. <laughs> Benjamin Peters. This is what happens when we leave you. <laughs> asks, what is the test for rocks raising TDS vinegar? Uh, yes. Actually, two years ago, our son science fair project was testing rocks to see if they're aquarium safe uh, or, you know, active to pH and stuff like that. Uh, the vinegar works. Uh, if you're an adult and you can wear safety equipment, amuric acid works a lot better. Um, scratch the surface and then you know, drop a couple of uh, amuric acid drops or vinegar on it. Uh, Tell people to drop acid. <laughs> we would just get a cup of vinegar and drop the rock in it, let it sit for like 15 minutes or longer, and the bubbles will just start dumping out of it if it's going to leach any uh, minerals into your water column. Um, oh, JL is the same age as Shelby. No, Shelby's a little bit older than JL. Not by much, but a little bit. How old is he? 25. Oh, I'm definitely way older. Not way older. It's an ancient compared to that. 25 seems like it's so long ago. <laughs> Jamie said, Grant, you can fit a rack of 100 of those tanks somewhere. <laughs> I've thought about For it. Sure. I For definitely, sure. definitely could. That'd be crazy. Um, maybe if they could daisy chain all 100 of them, I would do it. Oh, but that'd be crazy. That's probably a fire hazard waiting to happen. Yeah. Uh, I got to get out of this pet shop before I'm broke. That's not a bad idea, Craig. Pet stores can be awfully expensive. Dee Dee says long in the tooth means you haven't you have gotten old. Well, I guess because I know what it means now, I'm that much older. <laughs> Instantly older because just you know what it means. Just aged me by now. twenty years, Dee Dee. Yeah. Oh, your fault. <laughs> I'm back. It hurts already. <laughs> How long have we been sitting here? Three hours. <laughs> ah, you're not funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crypt Keeper said, "Yes, I am. I look like I'm 17 at best." Yeah, it's pushing it. He sounds like he's 40, though. When I was listening to his videos, I'm like, oh, this dude's like 40. I knew exactly what to expect. And uh, 
Nope. Totally caught off guard by who he actually looked like. Yeah. No. Passing wind. His I, dad looks young, but like old. It's so weird. Like a young... Like you could tell he's your dad, but he still looks really young. <laughs> passing wind said, I used to go collecting with Julius Caesar. I don't think you're that old. <laughs> Lady Diane said, in references to horses whose teeth grow their whole life long in the tooth is an old horse. And listen, I grew up with horses, so I, I didn't, I just don't, I don't know. Never heard that one. All right. Old in body, young in spirit, Nathan said, 43, but my body's going on 60 and, and the mind's stuck in my 20s. <laughs> yeah, that if I kept doing landscaping, that that's how I would have been. Also, I managed to reverse some of the damage I did doing landscaping by not doing anything the last couple of years and just mooching off of all of Shelby's manpower. But uh, <laughs> oh. I lost some years before that. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh. Are you going to go to the tortilla story? Woo. No, no. Not no, yet. No, we'll no talk about it. Did you want to bring that up? So, you know. <laughs> I did. We did see a tank uh, video of Jaden uh, from like six years ago when he was helping me do water changes on the tank before the quesadilla wiped it out. Yeah, same tank. It was so cute. Jaden was so adorable. Yeah, and he knew the difference between a shrimp and a snail back then. He made it clear. He's only, what, like four? He says, with, with age comes wisdom, and now you're already smarter. <laughs> but what did I forget when I learned that? That's my issue. <laughs> Tim, scuba has you beat. Dude looks like 12. He, he said, that is but true. That is true. It's pretty darn it cool, too. Like <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing about Steve. Is in like two years that kid could look totally different. <laughs> Where in two years, Tim it's kind of like might be able to grow a beard thicker than what he has it, but not by much. Scuba might be able to grow a whole beard in two years. I'm not saying you can't grow a beard, Tim, but I think you told me you couldn't grow a beard. And that was my reference. And then uh Dee, Dee said yes, lady, but I th I didn't think he would be able to reference that. Oh, that's how that's staying now. Oh? I didn't mean to. You're not happy cute. with it? Yeah, I can okay. break it for you if you want. I mean, I could break it. I know I can break it. I just, if it's going to stay, it's, it's just going to stay that my, way. My only issue with scaping on the main stage is I couldn't smash the rocks and break them. The, the stage was, like, bouncy for, like, you had, uh, <clears throat> WWE fighters and stuff like that to bounce off of it. What? Uh, so Dane says, hey, friends, just got into the stream and trying to get back to Tampa from Cleveland for the past five hours. Thanks for giving me something to listen to. Well, nice. drive safe. Drive safe. Seems like you probably got like 12 more hours to go. Oh, man. That's awful. Maybe less. But I think 12. I think that's a good number to hit. All right. Uh, Nathan, yep, I've done ma landscaping maintenance for a long time as well. Yeah, and it, if you're over six foot, it really breaks your back even more. Uh, that's my, why the new name is S-T-G-O-E, Shelby's Garden of Eater. <laughs> and then he corrected himself, S-G-O-E. Uh, Lady Diane Didi, how he's managed to be around horses and not hear that makes me feel very old so i when i was very small uh my, and my mom's friends had a bunch of horses and i helped one of the ponies learn how to i don't know hold a person i don't even know what the the proper terminology for that is um but learn how to ride a horse at a very young age um and did this oh, breaking in a horse. yeah breaking in a horse but i thought that was like only for wild horses and that's why i didn't want to do it I mean, technically, all horses when you now have to be taught to do that. Well, so you have to break them in at a certain age. 
and then just always been around horses that way with my mom's friend but sadly like always had to aw had to let go of the horses anytime they got broken in they sold them so like i never got an attachment to the horses um and then we orig uh eventually got a job where i worked on a farm that had two really old horses uh cheyenne was 27 when she passed and i probably started working at the farm four years prior to that so she was 23 years old um and i never heard about it we took care of the horses the stables and everything like that in the pasture but i don't know i only ever talked to one person on the farm and there wasn't a lot of hey you ever heard of this old saying or anything like that so it, i don't know never heard of it it's not usually that it's usually they just bring it up grant oh cookie but grant i made the best ice cream sauce last week while a friend was visiting himalayan salted caramel and ghost pepper tasted great with blackberry on black raspberry ice cream maybe but like no <laughs> I, I i like spicy but keep it away from my ice cream eh? sounds awesome honestly it's not something i really want uh, JL said, do you already have your booth for Daytona? I'm still contemplating getting one. A long drive from Colorado. Yeah, we already have a booth, I believe, picked out. If not, I will double check. But I'm fairly sure it's already on the uh, the vendor's layout um, next to the shrimp contest. But I might move it over to the aquascape contest if possible. Um, it's looking good from this angle. The people can't see what you're doing. Um, yeah, it just looks like a pile of rocks. That's what it is. Not bad. Could be better. All right. It's when, hard to glue uh, some of these pieces together. When starting, start watching westerns. You know you're getting old. Yeah, I'm not ready to watch any westerns yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've watched. I watched them when I was a kid. My mom always had them on. Like the the most played one at our house was probably the good, the bad, and the ugly. I could not keep my attention on it. But Jaden, as a baby, loved watching anything like Western because they had like the old tiny ones that had like the ding 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 ding. ding. Jaden would just go in his little jumper and he would just jump around. Thought he was gonna be more of a cowboy. He is not at all. Not even close. Well, Kirk Keeper <laughs> said. Grant, if you tried it, you would love it. I'm like, yeah, sure, I would love it just because it's attached with ice cream. Doesn't doesn't mean I wouldn't just love the ice cream by itself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a big caramel fan either, but you know, I would try it. I'm not gonna be disrespectful and be like, no, Crypt Keeper, I'm not gonna try that monstrosity. This is what I have so far. This looks terrible from this angle. But it's supposed to be a cave. Um it looks terrible from that angle. Can you push them together a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, they're completely yeah. separate. Yeah, get them together more. Oh, almost broke it. Don't touch it. It's supposed to be a cave, though. This yeah. is supposed to go this way. Oh. And then out, but I haven't decided yet, so. It's starting to look like it might just go this way. We'll I want to make like a zigzag cavern one day but all these little tiny holes you saw that will be covered with uh with moss so it's not none of these rocks line up perfectly but we're trying Didi i'm said trying, these, sorry Didi said lady d these young whippersnappers but an older person at the barn is who said it to me and i didn't know so Lady Diane yelled rawhide. Don't know why. I'm so out of it right now. I, I feel like this is like a northern thing and or it's a southern thing. And Florida just doesn't count for either one of those. Like even <laughs> though we're like a southern state, all the northerners have moved down here and there's like a cross of northern and southern blend and the kids growing up, we didn't know which one to follow. So we're just like, uh, we're neutral. I can talk like a New Yorker if I need to, or I can talk like a Southerner, but 
I don't know. I have a very neutral accent, I feel. Nobody's got an accent from Central Florida. Not bad. It's not the way I was going with it, though. Yeah, but sometimes that's that's the best part about it. Aquascape you can change all the time. Uh, Frog Brawler said, I've never been to Aquashella, but I'm planning to go to Daytona. What should I expect when I get there? Well, if you would have, Frog Brawler, gone to Aquashella, Dallas, they had a booth called Pyro Toads. I think that would have been right up your alley. And I'm upset because I didn't realize it was there until Teardown. And I'm like, what? I walked right by this booth and I had no idea. And yeah, it definitely looked interesting. But um, Aquashella really is like the uh, pet store that you wish you had in your backyard that has everything that you could ever have thought of from custom t-shirts and artwork to uh, lines of different kinds of fish and stuff like that that you can't find elsewhere. Um, like there was some uh, fancy guppy, or not guppy, fan there's always fancy bettas and stuff like that, but um, there was some really nice goldfish at the last one um, that Shelby was supposed to buy a goldfish, but uh, we had told the guy the last one got eaten, so no more goldfish. Um, but uh, they they breed a lot of Ordana, the Ranchus. I don't know exactly what kind of goldfish there are, but you know there is some really high end goldfish that you don't really catch at mainly any of your your pet stores or anything like that. Um, plus, there's other pet stores that set up their own booths that usually bring in the high end stuff that doesn't really sell in the pet store or whatnot. Um, and then there's all different vendors for all different things. There's uh, products and brand representatives and ambassadors from uh, companies like Seachem, CJ, um, you know, all, all different big brands and stuff like that that are out there that are advertising. Um, and then you also got different events like the main stage speakers, main stage scape offs, uh, different YouTubers in the media lounge area and stuff like that. Um, and they, they really do have a lot going on. So if you've ever been to an aquarium event before, you ever been to a Repticon, you ever been to an art expo that kind of plays a lot of techno music, it's all of those in one. So you want to add anything to that, Shelby? Just a great thing to be a part of. Um, met a lot of our friends through there. Uh, so it's nice to go around and, I mean, we get to see some of our followers and people that watch us here. Um, but it's it's really interesting to do things like that. Um, I would say Aquashella is just more of the upbeat. Like, it seems like everyone's trying to support everyone else. So it's really nice to see a lot of aquascaping. So it's really cool. Um there's just a lot of things about it. I mean, and it's freshwater sure and salt. And reptile. So that's, that's what I enjoy is like throwing in those reptiles too. So I get to see the tortoises and newts and things like that. And like Chris Biggs, best thing is there's no birds involved. So, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, so Rawhide is an older and western show with uh, Clint Eastwood. Now, now I'm like, is that why everybody yells rawhide? Is that I the TV show? I don't know anyone that does that. I'm pretty sure that's what it's from. Probably, probably. Matt said, "Ha ha, uh, Florida neutral." Um, no, what are what are we southern? Do we really have that southern accent? Because I don't know. There's there's several states that are. I think he's referring to like our politics not being neutral. Definitely one side on Florida there. I'm talking, it's about, a rock shot. I'm talking about accent, all right? I'm purposely, um, I think, throwing a little southern accent on it now. Purposefully. But, I grew up in Florida. And my parents have a more southern accent than I do. 
um, and they don't even really have it. They're from Oklahoma and Indiana. My mom's got more of a southern accent, but my dad's got an accent that's out of this country altogether. So yeah, I can't. His grandfather <laughs> couldn't understand. They're, they got New Zealand accents, and it's it's like near impossible for me to understand. Uh, we did a live stream on Thursday with a uh, creator from New Zealand. And that's where my dad's from, my grandpa. So it was really easy to understand him. Um, but his accent wasn't really as thick yeah, his and colonial as, as my, my parents are. So, well, my mom, no accent at all. But yeah, <laughs> Shelby has such good taste. How did she end up with Grant, Matt said? <laughs> Because I used to be prime meat, all right? <laughs> Shelby just did not let me cure very well. You're blaming me? There's a lot of moisture in it, you know? And it, 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 not enough salt. They, <laughs> they had a city slicker cowboys, is what Dee Dee said. So JL Pyrotoad was my booth neighbor. And then uh, Passing Wind said I'm a Miami native, parents from up north, so no accent unless I want one. See, that's what I'm saying. We're neutral. We can we can go whichever way. Matt said, why do I always spell her name with an extra E? I know that is wrong. Uh What are you smiling about? Are you reading something I can't read? No, just saying that Dee Dee said yes, you're right about the rawhide. Uh, Frog Browler saying the way Florida works is the further south you go, the more northern it gets. Uh, I would say so. That is, I'm from the Keys, but like you go into like the branches of Keys. Um, if you haven't been there, there is a rude awakening for a lot of things and people would be so overly sensitive about now <laughs> i grew up it seems like a whole different world on those islands um yeah it's i want to say it's northern they're just out there kind of like they're stranded on an island uh they're all kind of weird <laughs> uh. so uh frog brawler said uh, that was a pretty good description uh, and then JL said, it's great for us small businesses to put our name out there and make new connections. Uh, so earlier you asked how I did in sales and stuff like that. Um, even at past shows where we didn't really, you know, make any money or anything like that or almost broke even and someone got a speeding ticket. Um, oh, I wonder who that could have been. <laughs> so uh, those shows, the best thing about them is the networking, the connections and stuff like that. Um, there was some real snooty kids at the Aquascape contest and they were real cocky and, and talked about just smack and stuff like that. And Shelby's like, kid, we're right here. Like, this is not something you, you say or do. Right. Um, I but don't understand where people's manners are anymore. I, I had such high hopes for them because they were so passionate about it. And they're all talking about oh, how I, I want to make connections and all this stuff at, at the show and da 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 da. And uh, then they, they ended up being snooty and not the type of person I want to make connections with. But I like to see that kind of passion. I didn't want to deter the kids or anything like that. So I didn't say anything. But yeah, it, it is a great place for you to make connections, meet new people, and just get your name out there. Uh, I think we're going to run out of business cards at the next show. And I'm okay with that just simply because we're going to be making some new changes. Uh, I think we're going to have to announce those new changes next week on the show. But, uh, We did have a giveaway for this show. We did have a giveaway for this I show. I bought the giveaway for this show. You bought the giveaway for this you show. You know where those are? No, I don't know where that show. Oh, so I next week we will have a giveaway. Because <laughs> it's only we, 20 minutes left. We will be I'm going so over some stuff with the shrimp contest and we'll be making a big announcement. So that's what next week's live stream will be. Is big announcement. Not as big giveaway, but still big. Hey, um, it's a nice giveaway. This one was from 
you know, we, we have two, this is a hard two of them, so. okay? We, we, have, we have two things to give I, away. I forgot to um, But, yeah, so... Lots of stuff to be done and announced in the next in the next coming week. Lots of big things have been happening and changing, and it's all for the better. So it, it's all good. Um, just we've been waiting for the business cards to run out. So it's it's time. It's gonna happen. All right, I'm trying to catch up and chat now. I'm so far behind. I'll leave you to chat, and it just gets behind. Wow. I know. Well, then you you, you read some of it now. Dimax food is great. Just spent 150 to get more worth every cent. My fish are thriving on it. Uh, so Dimax, I think, is one of the newer products that just made their way into the United States. I uh, thought about getting it and trying it out for ourselves. But their aquascaping soil didn't look that promising, so I was kind of deterred. But I'll take your word on it, Craig. Maybe I'll try it at the next show. I think Core Vault will be at the next one, and they have it, so... Richard Reynolds, how you doing? I just now saw it. Saw your chat. It's like, what did Didi say? Reference Richard that I missed, but I see it now. <clears throat> I'm not the best at reading chat. As you all can see, <laughs> I don't know which ones to read and which ones I, I should skip over. Because Nirvana, I walked away for a minute and come back to something weird. What was the something weird? I don't even know. Well, Shelby, don't see don't see very well without her glasses. I have my contacts in. Oh, she's got I've a been contacts reading. in. So. The, the computer's very far away from yeah. us tonight. It, we're trying and to I've been reading set it. it up so you can see our escapes. And then Dane said Grant was cute until he gave Shelby a, a cap on the number of tanks that can be used for fish. <laughs> uh. but listen, Shelby's going to be getting a whole room for her fish and I don't think she's gonna want any more tanks after that so and the whole garage is also gonna have fish too she she's messing around with the flag fish tank today and she's like I want more of them yeah they're all gonna oh go in the gosh. garage if you haven't seen our posts on Instagram you gotta see they were coloring up while I was taking care of the plants in the garage and they just look so beautiful so JL said I broke even <laughs> just barely but it was worth every cent to talk to everyone yeah so that that's the way we put into it as well we spent a lot of money on the foods hotel travel expenses and stuff like that but uh you gotta think we handed out a lot of business cards and the trickle down money uh for the next month or so we'll see an influx influx of buys from not just dallas but all of all of the texas area did it break again no i just I lost the rock that I had behind there and found it again. Sorry. And Nirvana said, you don't have to have a booth to network either. I just pass out my custom stickers every year and people don't have any trouble remembering me. Yeah, it's called Backpacking the Show. Uh, I don't think Aquashella has any issues with it. There are other shows that, that have issues, but you're paying your attendance to be there, so... Uh, what types of rocks would you use to mimic mountains? Um, Dragonstone's great. I think the mountain stone is by far the best. Um, and then I also like using uh, the petrified wood. I think it makes some nice cliff sides and stuff like that. But Dragonstone, probably number two. Mountain stone is the number one. Uh, taking a rock to, uh, I mean, a hammer to some of the mountain stone rock, you can make a lot of little tiny mountain uh, peaks and stuff like that. So uh, definitely the best one out there. Um, Benjamin, yes, but some of the most awesome oh, ethnic food. Talking to the Hispanics down south in Florida. It even trickles down up to where we are at. We get some pretty good Puerto Rican cuisine at our bodega near us. That's what we should do for lunch tomorrow. Um, Liquid Zoo said, run out of business cards. Tell people to scan your badge and screenshot it. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, 
But as soon as we run out of them, we should have a new business card ready to go. Um, all new there details. is a lot of um, older people that come to the shows that do not have cell phones or use them like that. So we will always stick to business cards because some people just don't want to waste the time like that. There's a lot of people that don't have long at these shows. So um, I like to have that as a backup, but um, would always have business cards for the people that don't use internet and stuff. Uh, Nate said, watching Shelby working, was she a Lego child? <laughs> I did play. I had to steal my brother's Legos all the time. Um, but yes, I, I normally don't piece things together like this. This is more of Grant style. I'm more of a, I don't know. Florida man uh, has a hard a time hard. reading. Imagine that. <laughs> got jokes, Matt. <laughs> oh, that one hurt. See struggle we got talking, edumacations so. here in Florida, okay? They're they're fine and dandy, okay? Don't judge us. And then Crypt Keeper said, do you prefer scaling the small nano tanks or larger tanks like Keystone Clash and Aqua Shella contests? Uh, so I personally like the larger tanks. Uh, you're able to work more in depth and get those fine little minor details and stuff like that. Um and not break something with the little tanks. There's not a lot of room to work around. That's why Shelby's building it out of the tank instead of in the tank. Um, so I, I prefer the bigger. Like my dream one day is to aquascape like a huge display for a zoo or an aquarium or something like that. Um, my, my dream was never really to aquascape one of these tanks, but still enjoy doing it. And I like doing the smaller ones because they're portable and I can take them and do the things that I do on TikTok um, where I can't realistically take a 10 gallon tank down a, a mile and a half path to the some of these spots that I've been at. So. Oh, and Dee Dee said I, I was prime meat right before they came in. That's when it was beer. Uh, Carbon said, is there any other shrimp substrates besides Brightwell that you'll recommend since Brightwell can be difficult to find? Um, so the uh, Owasi and the UNS soil and Tropica are three that I would recommend. Uh, Landon and uh, the Control, the Control is the UNS substrate. So uh, the, the Kedema is the bonsai soil. Uh, so those those fives are also uh, good recommendations. But the Brightwell should be easy to find uh, on Amazon. If it's sold out of Amazon, uh, if you look up Continuum uh, Brightwell website, you should be able to find the, uh, the direct link to buy from Brightwell. Um, Craig said, I, I got a uh, Mazavar as well today to try from Dimax 2. I don't know what that is. When passing one said I was you prime meat in the Bronze it? Age. We got Mazavor. I got the Mazavor. Maybe it's a type of food from Dimax. Uh, and then Nano asked Shelby, are you entering any of the international aquascape contests this year? No, I want, well, there is one that I'm trying to do. I don't know if I'll be able to get a tank done because we're traveling a little too much. There is a biotope um, thing I did post it on my Facebook. I already forgot the name of it right now, but it's, I believe, in the Ukraine that they're doing it. Let's see. Where did I put that? We never have the time that we want to put all the details and stuff like that. And it's like, if you can't pour your heart and soul into it, why even bother and try? Because the people that are going to win are the people that are pouring their heart and soul into them. So, yeah, see, it's a, 
follow nature one. It's hard to read on the screen. You got it. But it's on it's that. on my Facebook. Um, it's just an international biotope and ecological contest called Follow Nature, uh, make the world better. So you have to go through, uh, take video of the area that you are doing your tank to do. It's like my TikToks where you kind of do a, a tank out there, scape it, put some natural, you know, like uh, some native fish there, some plants um, from the area, and you have to make sure that they are not invasive, that they're actually that. Then you have to do a little bit of a project of like what's if there's issues if there's human um destruction uh they kind of want video of that so what you're doing for them is pretty much researching th that area to you know let them know what's going on in this region uh what fish there are what plants there are um the testing of the waters and everything um, there was a couple other ones I wanted to do, but like they have rules where you can't do any other contest. So I'm not going to do one that tells me not that I can't do other ones for the year. So unless I know that I can only get one done a year, um, I would do that one. But, um, I don't know. I haven't made a decision yet. I'm going to make the tank and I have plans to do one of our bigger tanks at the bottom over here right when you walk in i'm going to also do that a biotope and see which one i like and see if like it's worth doing the contest so and then jamie asked am i all right to keep the red and uh blue dragon blood calcios together um yeah jamie uh you can keep them together the one color that will be dominant though is going to be black Blue is going to be recessive. Um, so even though you don't have any blacks in the mix, crossing the reds and the blues will get you blacks. And then uh, black is going to be the dominant color. You'll get a lot of red still, but you'll get fewer and fewer of, of the blue dragon's blood. So those are kind of the you know more sought after ones. They are a little bit more expensive. But the reason why they're more expensive is because out of the three, you get less of them when crossing them with one another. So um, you, you'll definitely be okay with keeping them together. They won't crossbreed. You won't lose the lines or anything like that. So you can do that just fine. Uh, Oinky said, uh, Shelby, have you ever used uh, Mika quartz in your aquascaping? And if you have, uh, what is your opinion on it? I don't, I have never used any quartz in our aquascaping. Um, I know we have some rocks that have quartz in it, but I have yet to do it, so I would not know. So the, the only thing like close to quartz is like uh, in some of the uh, maple leaf rock, there's some quartz, and there's a good amount of quartz in the... Um, mountain stone um i don't think the quartz itself is going to produce any uh minerals into the water but i think a lot of the times the quartz is held into the rock by like calcium and stuff like that and the surrounding rock is what's going to alter uh the water parameters and stuff like that so uh definitely want to test out the quartz before using it in an aquascape all right you look like you're fading it's too small for the skate. You gotta build it so up. So another, yeah, there's no building that up. So another thing to be cautious about when you do a skate is to use the whole volume of the skate. I have only used not even to halfway, maybe right at halfway of the skate, um, which is cool. I mean, it's okay, but it doesn't give you the effect that this is a big tank. So when you look at it, it's not going to give you that wow factor like look how bigger grant's tank looks than mine just next to each other because he used his full scape where i only used half of mine so that is also a trick um or tip sorry to making a tank that um really wows people um i do see that you could also use plants to fill in to create more depth but the fact is that what i was trying to create was two canyons kind of next to each other 
So to add a bigger plant to the sides of these would take that whole illusion away. Um, and yes, it would it would still look pretty and it would look like a nice scape, but it wouldn't give you the 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 illusion I was going for. So I think you could save this though if you just go out and find two rocks to go underneath. I think you can still save that. You just got to find two rocks to go underneath that still fit the the Maybe. curvature of the stone. Maybe. It's savable. Maybe. Yeah. Do you have, have bigger stone in, the, in there? No. You, you want to run and grab some? You want to worry about it another night? It is towards the end of the stream. So. But Carbon said uh, Petco is going to get six tanks, but this, with the sale... I added a seventh for two bucks. Thought it would share. The shrimp hobby is very much like Pokemon. You got to catch them all. Yeah, and it's slowly turning into the same for plants with me as well. And Benjamin said, Carbon, I feel the same way. Uh, Nirvana said, Color Quartz fades under UV over time, just for anyone who doesn't know. Abs. Aquatic says, I want to do a shrimp only tank. Do I need shrimp substrate or no? Suggestions, please. So, uh, you don't need shrimp substrate if you're going to do Neocaridina. Um, it depends on what kind of shrimp you want to get. If you want to uh, mix RO water and stuff like that to do Caridina, that's going to be completely up to you. But I would check out our YouTube videos on everything you need to know about Neocaridina shrimp. Or everything you need to know about Caradina shrimp if you want to decide on what type of shrimp you should keep and start uh, trying to breed yourself. Um, and then those videos literally give you everything that you need to know in order to breed and keep and be successful. So, um, Brandon said you could also use plants to fill it in and create more depth. Uh, Nirvana Aquatics said, Shelby add a bonsai sculpture to the peak that has roots that stretch over the gap. Uh, Passing Wind says, it's all about perspective for watching a video on the camera obscure. Uh, Nano said, raise the substrate. You can raise the substrate, but I think she's better off if she can find like two flat rocks to go underneath it and add substrate. Because she would also add in um some depth from front to back of the tank by doing that as well yeah i um, just want to be careful with the adding of the substrate because then it would take a lot of the canyon away and i want it to be as deep as possible so most likely what i'll have to do is get a big piece of dragon stone for both bottoms uh, and then kind of submerge those into the sand to give it the the height that i'm looking for and then, yeah, the twigs was also a, an idea I already had. Um, a little tree would be cute if I could make it work. But I was going to add twigs in between the canyon since it was supposed to be a cave. But as soon as it became like a canyon instead, um, we'll see what's going on. Brandon says, or drop the water level during a shot. Yeah, you could definitely do that to take a little picture or something like that. That'd However, cool we're bringing these to a show. <laughs> yeah. They need to look on point. Yeah. And you got to think, Shelby's only taken an hour uh, or two hours total into the scape. And most of the time she's been talking, going back and forth with chat for the first hour and stuff like that. So uh, there, there's still some time and effort and work that needs to go into it. To, to kind of perfect it and uh, maximize it. That's good right there. Um, and then um, DD said, Grant, would you be adding any plants to your scape? If so, what kind? So I thought about getting some uh, Nubis Petit for the bottom layer in the shadows and then in the top uh, around the back and maybe a little bit in the middle i was going to add in the uh, mini uh, java fern so uh, we have some wind love java fern with a little low tech light i think would stay rather short uh in this tank and then you know even if it grows too big you can you know cut the bigger leaves out 
and replant the little uh, seedlings that grow out of it, which is a little bit of a maintenance and stuff like that. But I also have um, some different kinds of mosses and stuff like that. We have some goose moss left over from the other show. I can plug in any of the holes that have any of the uh, super glue showing or anything like that and cover them up with a little bit of the boost moss. The boost moss is super, super slow growing, so you wouldn't have to trim or do anything with that for several months. Um, Scuba Steve says, hey, guys, love and miss y'all. Use this three-month super chat. James said $56 for a 10 gallon tank in Canada now at PetSmart. Oh, no dollar per gallon for you up there in Canada, eh? eh? Um, thank you, Richard, for reminding people to hit that like button. Appreciate it. Passing Wind said, How are the cherry shrimp coming along? Uh, so, most of the shrimp are doing all well and breeding outside, getting back into the gear. Uh, we just don't want to start selling too soon and then run out of shrimp right away. So we are letting uh, one batch of shrimp kind of grow up and uh, get to age so that way they can start producing babies before we start letting go of some of uh, the shrimp. Uh, for those that have been checking, though, um, we have put the yellow neocaridina back on the website. So summer weather is here. They are getting back into the mood and swing of things so uh it won't be long till we have a full variety of shrimp back up on there uh don't grant hate dragonstone no where do you get that from scuba steve uh anubis petite one of my favorite plants at scuba steve uh shelby started hers at 10 18 uh so not even a full two hours yet Not even a full hour yet, according to DB. <laughs> Not bad then. Um, so yes. some boosts, some boosts wouldn't be a bad idea. I just like holding on to all the boosts because it's such a slow grower Pretty. for the shrimp tanks and stuff like that, and I can't buy it from the nurseries. So uh, if somebody reached out and was like, "Grant, I'll give you four hundred dollars, scape it with some boosts," I'll, I'll put some boosts in it and send it out to you. But uh, I probably won't throw any boosts in it. The, the Anubis Nana Petite comes in looking really nice from the nurseries, and we got a couple good uh, bundles of it. So, um, Scuba Steve says he's going to get some Orange Eye Blue Tigers with this check this week. I got you. And uh, Jamie says the only dollar per gallon sales uh, we are on what percentage gallon buckets. Not even like some cheap boots, eh? Uh, JL says, I flew with all three of those bags I got from you at the end of the day. Uh, TSA was loving it. Not bad. Glad to hear they made it through the, the travel safe. There's a lot of people that are always worried about flying with them. And I think it depends on the airline. Some airlines are a lot pickier than others. Uh, Nirvana says, grow some... Boost Immerse, it grows way faster, if not underwater. Uh, so I try to grow it outdoors in our grow beds, and it just doesn't take the way Anubis does. Um, I think I need to put it in like a greenhouse inside a greenhouse with a cooling van. Um, and Ab said it, I would be the, the same, to be fair. Uh, Carbon says, where do you grow your plants? Do you use shrimp tanks or fish tanks? So... The plants are grown uh, mainly in fish tanks. The moss is grown in our shrimp tanks, though. Uh, we do have some plants like java ferns and stuff like that growing in some of our uh, shrimp tanks, but I like to avoid it as much as possible. Uh, we have like 10 tanks set up in the garage just for plants, and we just happen to have some fish in those tanks as well. Um, our favorite fish in those tanks are the American flag fish because they do a lot of work. Um, and then, uh, the other ponds and stuff outside, we keep our Madaka rice fish and stuff like that in them. So not a lot of shrimp in them just simply because of the fertilizer and open ponds and stuff, 
stuff like that for full sun and do so much water changes on them. So, um, all right, a couple more, then we're out of here. It's getting late. Uh, oh, I think that's it. Everyone's just talking. So, <laughs> I'd like to thank y'all for watching tonight, sticking with us. Hope you enjoyed the Aquascape. Uh, we will have an updated uh, version of Shelby's Aquascape next week, so stay tuned. And we have a giveaway and a special announcement next week, so stay tuned for that. See you, everyone. Bye.